In this YouTube tutorial, we are going to take a look at a photo that I pulled from unsplash.com and paint it in a really loose watercolor form. We're painting that one and it's going to be so much fun because it may look kind of impossible, but you can totally capture the look of a watercolor landscape in just a few easy steps. Here's what I'm using, grab what you need. So to get started, I'm going to um, get my paper wet. I taped down my paper just so to keep it taut and so I don't have to worry so much about the sides. And so I'm just going to get the first like two thirds of my paper wet with clean water. And then I'm going to pick up some blue and um, as I'm picking up the blue, because notice how this is like a lighter blue up here, I'm going to use like more of a watery blue. So it's not super diluted. It, uh, before I started painting with it, I added a lot of water to my blue. And then I'm going to, just to mimic the effect of some clouds in here, kind of paint around some white spots so that I have some cloudy areas to work with. And then I'm going to keep those areas white, but I'm not going to worry so much about making them look like, you know, super realistic clouds because this is, as we mentioned, more of like a loose watercolor feel. So I'm just taking a little bit more of the blue, a more diluted, not diluted, a more pigmented blue and painting around, but then adding more water to it on my brush and uh, just kind of loosely going back and forth. I know that when you watch somebody paint, uh, especially when it seems like they're a really experienced painter, it can be confusing because you don't know like exactly why they're painting where they're painting or what the brush strokes are supposed to mean. And what I can tell you is right now what I'm doing is just kind of randomly moving my paintbrush around, making sure to keep some of the white space to keep the clouds. So I don't have like a rhyme or reason really. I'm just holding my brush at the end of the handle like this and loosely um, letting it kind of go where it will. And then I'm gonna, I washed off my paintbrush and to get a little bit more water on there. And I want to create kind of like a subtle gradient. So the top of the sky is more blue and then as we move past the clouds and down towards the bottom, it's gonna be a much lighter value. So you can see more of the white of the paper coming through. And then I'm going to keep a wet edge right here. So I'm not gonna take the water all the way down to the paper. I'm going to just make sure that the edge of the blue sky is mostly clean water. It can be a little bit of blue, but mostly really light value, clean water. And then I also want to make sure the edge is not quite straight. I want it to be a little wonky, I guess is the word that I like to use, just so that we can kind of mimic these uh, like plants coming off the horizon. It's not going to be a super straight edge. Now I'm going to trade, I was using a size 12 brush and I'm going to trade to my size eight. And with my size eight brush, I'm going to pick up some green and just like along the edge of the uh, blue here, the edge of the sky, I'm going to paint the, with the green so that part of the paint uh, goes up and into the wet of the blue sky right here, but also so that I'm painting just below it as well. And that's partly so that we can try to capture these plants that seem to be coming out of this reference photo here. And so if I just paint just barely below here, I don't push the paint upward, it's going to blend into the sky because of the wet on wet technique. And um, that's going to kind of help give us that loose feel that I think this painting calls for. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of a brown and 
uh, do the same thing, but just along the bottom in some places so that the brown and the green can kind of uh, blend, blend together. And I'm using more of like a light brown, maybe more of like a, a burnt sienna, almost dark yellow ochre kind of brown here, uh, rather than like burnt umber, dark brown. And then that brown is just going to kind of blend in with the green of the grass. And so now that I have that, I'm going to take even more green and uh, some nice and watery green, and I'm just going to paint down below as well. But I'm going to, on purpose, leave behind some white spaces as I'm painting because I'm going to add some yellow uh, to this green pasture also. And then once this is dry, then I'm going to paint in some like grass, some green, green grass. So I'm adding in some green and then I'm going to take some yellow ochre and add in some yellow ochre in some of the white spots. And notice I'm just having, like this is a really loose watercolor style. I'm not trying to make this, as I mentioned before, look exactly like the reference photo. I'm just kind of using the reference photo as a guide to help me know what to paint and to give me, you know, some ideas on how I might like this painting to turn out. And so now that I've done that, I'm going to take a little slightly darker green and add some darker green patches in here as well to give this green kind of pasture just a little more texture. So I'm adding just a little bit, uh, a little bit of darker green in this grassy area, still leaving behind some white spaces just for texture. And notice how some of the green has kind of slid upward into the sky. That's okay. I think uh, one way that you can get rid of that is to kind of just push it down. If you don't catch it until it's too late, it might just mean that you have some green creeping up on your sky, and I think that is fine too, but uh, you can get some blue if you want and just kind of push that green down or dilute it to make it more of a blue-green so your sky is separate from your grass, if that's the look that you're going for. Some of my sky had already dried, and so now, uh, just to make sure I don't have like random dried paint lines, I'm just uh, painting, because I used this blue to push it down, I'm just kind of painting across to blend all of that in with the rest of the sky. Okay, so now that I have that first layer of grass and sky, I'm going to let this dry and then finish by painting more of the details. The first thing I'm going to do now that this first layer is dry is paint the tree. So there's a tree in the distance um, and I am going to paint the tree first and then I'm going to paint the little details around it after. So I'm taking some dark green and I think I'm going to put the tree about right here. And I'm just going to kind of use my small detail brush to paint little blobs uh, for the leaves. The big leaves of the tree, but I'm definitely leaving some white space in between the blobs. And I'm using varying amounts of water on the green that I'm using so that sometimes the paint is dark value and sometimes the paint is a lighter value. And I think that's pretty good for the leaves. I'm going to add just a little, just a few more dark spaces by picking up some dark green just to add a few more little shadows here. But once again, we're not going for super realistic, so the shadows don't have to be like exa placed exactly right. They're mostly to add a little bit of variation to this tree. And okay, so now that I have this tree, the leaves, I'm going to paint the 
a trunk, which when you look at it, it kind of is cast in shadow. And so it doesn't really matter if the trunk looks super brown, I think. So, I mean, I am using a little bit of brown, but um, the trunk's not gonna matter so much. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of green to it. And, uh, okay, so there's that trunk. And now I'm going to paint the, there's like a bunch of plants that are popping up on the horizon right there, right where the hill meets the sky. And so I'm going to take some of the, the yellow ochre that I have and some of the green and just kind of like, uh, you can use, I'm using the, just the tip of um, this size eight silver brush, but you can also use a small detail brush. I'm just gonna kind of paint some of these plants like coming up using very thin strokes. So it almost looks like grass along this hillside, just right along the horizon here. So I'm using mostly green right here and then I'm gonna go in and add some yellow in just a minute. So that's what it would look like if I used that uh, bigger brush. And now if I did the same thing with this small uh, detail brush, here's what that would look like. And I'm just going right along here and painting uh, this little line of plants. Then I decided to, uh, in order to make it blend more into the hillside, I think I'm going to paint uh, just a little like wet underneath it so that the plants kind of blend down into the bottom. And then uh, in order to make it so there's not just like some random line there, I'm going to kind of blend this line into the rest of the hillside, but using those uh, varied strokes that we did before, how we left some white spaces behind on this hillside, I'm gonna do that again as I'm blending in this uh, line of plants that we have going here. And that's just uh, to add some texture and using this loose style to make sure that we have this like line of plants along the horizon here, but also so that it doesn't look super choppy. And so now that I have that little wet line, I'm going to just add the rest of these plants along here so that the line doesn't dry at the top a line either. Working in loose watercolor, in case you didn't know before, is a lot of like working fast and working with what you have. So it's not really trying to make things look super realistic, but it is using certain tips and tricks you have to kind of trick the eye into thinking that you added a lot of detail where maybe it wasn't so much as the eye thinks that it is. Does that make sense? So, um, it's just kind of letting your paintbrush wander and using the tools that you have, like the wet on wet technique and uh, blending and making like little textures with uh, different colors and varying thicknesses to give the kind of detail that makes your eye think that you have added spent a lot of time making this look super realistic when in fact it's it's a pretty loose representation. So, okay, now that I have that little line up there, I'm just going to add a few blades, a few like tufts of grass down here. And I'm not going to, like you can tell that this grassy area has lots of uh, spots where you can see the blades, but I'm not going to add all of them. I'm just going to do a few, some blades of grass in a few places. And first I'm going to do it with this yellow. 
at like a yellow ochre and then I'm going to go back and add in some green. And I'm just kind of choosing randomly where to put the blades of grass. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, sometimes I'm putting the green where the yellow ones were, sometimes not. Some of the grass is darker than others. Some of it is coming down from the bottom here. It's just kind of, you know, letting your paintbrush wander and um, loosening up your hand, loosening up your mind too, as you're trying to paint some kind of representation of this landscape that you have from the reference photo. And it doesn't have to look perfect or clean even, it can look messy and that is still valid and it's still a really cool way to paint. So, okay, I'm just about done, I think, painting this grass. I'm just gonna paint a few more little tufts coming out of here. In some places. Just like that. And then, uh, one last thing, I see there's kind of like a very faint fence along this hill right here. And so because it's so faint, I'm gonna use a pretty light, uh, light color. I'm gonna mix kind of like a yellow, like a burnt sienna kind of color. And using my small detail brush, I'm just going to, uh, I see three little posts here. Uh, that could be behind grass like that and so I'm gonna paint those that I see and then just kind of paint a line across the grass with this yellow ochre and paint in the rest of the posts even though it's not quite I'm not sure if that's quite how it looks in the photo that's what I'm gonna do so and that's partly also what I mean by you don't have to feel like limited by the reference photo following it exactly, you can paint whatever you want and use it more of just as like a guideline. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just painting these yellow ochre posts along the line of this fence. And I'm not spacing them out super well because I know that there's a decent chance that when this fence was built, if it was built in real life, that it would be imperfect and uneven. And there you go. That is the uh, a simple way to paint this loose watercolor landscape from uh, this reference photo. Thanks again for joining me. If you want more tutorials just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.